What day is it? Wednesday. <laughs> I had to think. Oh, too. I know. You're gonna think that this is the song we should sing today when you hear the the lesson for today, but actually it doesn't fit. Wait till we get to this gospel lesson. It's kind of a surprise. So uh, what we're gonna sing instead is uh, from the hymnal. And some people are saying, oh, I wanted to sing the campfire song. Well, sorry, not going to do that. <laughs> I work with themes, right? Number 589, this is as close as I could come to something that matches our text. And especially in verse 3, there's a line that reflects what this text is talking about. So it's called, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens. And we, um, uh, we posted a link to those words in the top of the live stream. See. Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. Let your word to me come near. Newborn life and spirit give me. Let each promise still my fear. Death's dread power, its inward strife. Wars against your word of life. Fill me, Lord, with love strong that I cling to you forever. Oh, what blessing to be near you and to listen to your voice. Let me ever love and hear you. Let your word be now my choice. Many hard and sinners, Lord, flee in terror at your word. But to all who are waters living when my thirsting spirit leads. Lord, your words are blood life giving. On your words my spirit feeds. Lord, your words will be my light through death's cold and dreary night. Yes, they are my sword prevailing and my cup of joy unfailing. As I pray, dear Jesus, hear me, let your words in me take root. Let your spirit air be near me, that I bear abundant fruit. May I daily sing your praise, may my heart like anthems raise, till my highest praise is given in the endless joy of So, you're wondering, what is this text that is so tricky? We're still in Luke chapter 11, and Jesus has been talking to these Pharisees and these people who are questioning him, and, and, uh, and he complains about this generation, that they want a sign, and they want these miracle things. They're always looking for this, looking for that. He says, Jesus says this. These are familiar words, right? No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light, but when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no dark part, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. Now, when, when we read that first phrase, nobody after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand so everybody can see the light. And right away you think of this little gospel light of mine. I'm going to shine it over here. I'm going to shine it around my neighborhood. Uh, I'm going to shine it all over the world. And that's what Jesus is talking about in Matthew Matthew 5, I think, um, uh, where he tells a similar, uh, uses a similar analogy um, that you, uh, you have this light and you should shine it every place. But Jesus can use the same analogy to teach more than one thing. And in the Gospel of Luke, he's making a different point. I, 
I am kind of comforted to see that because sometimes, you know, I think, oh, I already used that illustration before, but this time I'm trying to say something different. And I'm constantly running up on that. We come to a, a scripture text and we can teach different things from it because there's, there's several points that are made in it. In this case, the, the light, you don't put it under a basket, but then he turns this analogy, he says, your eye, your eye is the lamp of your body. Now, it doesn't mean that your eye is the, is the light that shines out at the world. He says your eye is the light that shines in to you. Through your eyes, through the things that you perceive as you're looking out at the world, this is where you bring in light or not light. And what, does, what fills your body? You're, when you listen, when you, when you look, uh, be careful little eyes what you see, you know, you know that old song? When you look at the world, the things that you read and that you take in, they bring into your life light or darkness. This is similar to what Paul was talking about when he writes to the Philippians. Uh, I know you're familiar with this verse. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Take them in to yourself, and the God of peace will be with you. Right now, I, I, I'm taking in a lot of things. I'll bet you are too. You, you're sitting in your house, and so you're consuming media. You're watching shows. Uh, you're, you're binging on Netflix. You're, you're perhaps obsessing with the news and and you can read every half-baked opinion and anecdote about the COVID virus this person says this this person says that uh, and and uh, the politics of it or even the medicine of it which we still don't really know yet still so many unanswered questions but everybody has an opinion and we take all that in and I don't know about you, but I don't feel particularly enlightened. That is, that I've taken light in. It feels more like darkness. So much confusion. So much depression. So much bad news. And you know, kind of, uh, I read an article, <laughs> here we go again, read an article the other day uh, from Psychology Today about how we are we are sort of predisposed to listen especially to bad news first. We, we obsess about bad news and we race to those headlines before the good news ones. That's very nice, the good news is nice, but the bad news, that's gripping. And we, and we go to click on that video and we take in so much more of it. Jesus says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, that is, not, not your physical eye, but when you are looking at things in a healthy way, then your body's full of light. When you're looking at things in an unhealthy way, when you're looking at unhealthy things, your body's full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. Thankfully, our Lord can turn even darkness itself into light. As it says in Psalm 139, that, uh, that when I'm trying to hide from God uh, and I go to the deepest darkness, even the darkness is light to him. This world is, can be, have a lot of darkness and it can affect us. But the light of God's word, as we sang, uh, the word in verse 3 is, is living water. It's uh, life-giving bread. It's... Uh, where does it go? Your words will be my light through death's cold and dreary night and a sword prevailing and a cup of joy unfailing. What a beautiful thing. God's word is the best thing to fill your eyes with today and your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's pray. Dearest Jesus, I thank you for all the the information around me. We live in an information age. 
but Savior, please, by your Spirit, move me to open your word, to memorize it, to, to put it away in my mind, especially your words, dear, dear Jesus. Grant that I may read them, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them so that my body, my spirit, my life will be filled with light. Then, then truly I will radiate a gospel life, a light to the world around me. When I myself am filled with light, preserve us, O Lord, from the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.